today's webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to be talking to Mark Temple, who is uh, ESM Project Delivery Manager at the University of Glasgow. We're going to be talking all about their recent, well, sort of current, ongoing um, ESM project, really, and as part of that, their experience of procuring a new tool for the service desk. Um, and that's where our other guest comes in as well. We're also going to be talking to Andy Parker from Avanti a little bit later on. Um, he'll be sharing his top tips for a successful tool selection um, from obviously from his side of things, from the vendor point of view as well. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing uh, today. What we'll do first of all is um, we're going to be asking Mark uh, a few questions about the project, um, about his experience of the project, um, and then you'll have a chance to post your questions for Mark after that. So please do post them throughout the session, um, and I'll um, put those to Mark when we're when we're finished the Q and A. So as I say, Mark is. Um, ESM project delivery manager at the University of Glasgow. Uh, he's also been kindly doing his um, doing a blog for us uh, in sort of section by section, updating the story on there. So that's worth having a look at as well. If you go to our blog at servicedeskinstitute.com/blog, uh, um, and you can read a bit more of the background on there also. Uh, so let's welcome Mark to the webinar now. Hi, Mark. Hi, Zoe. Hello. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. It's, it's good to be with you. Excellent. Uh, so let's let's jump right into it then. If you first of all tell us a little bit about um, the background of this project, I guess what you what you needed to do and why. Okay. Uh, how many hours have we got? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's going to be there's certainly a, a lot to go through. A, a number of drivers. Um, we've come to a fork in the road, I think, in terms of the use of, of our, our current. Uh, service management platform. Um, the university itself is going through significant change, um, a massive campus expansion. Um, we have, we've recently taken over the, a, a, an old hospital site next to the university, so the campus is growing. Um, and the way, yeah. that we, the way that we deliver services, um, we, we knew had to change to, to keep up with expectations for, for this new, new initiative. Um, so we've been looking at um, our professional services has been a review uh, going on of them um, and you know from the procurement perspective um, it, it it really probably was was time to be to be testing the market um, you know we, we've done we've, we've covered quite a lot of ground over the years in terms of um, of taking the tool set out, outside of IT you know so mm -hmm. um, you know, we have had a bit limited, but but we we have had a bit of coverage in in other areas, campus security, data protection, other other places. Um, so it's you know a culmination of all these things, uh, just the, the yeah. perfect timing, the the alignment of the stars, and it and it was uh, you know it, yeah, it was time, it was time, time to do something. Um, so okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, um, and just tell us quickly what your what stage you're at now, and then we'll go back. Um, we'll go back to the beginning again, as it were. We'll we'll go through some of your experiences. Yeah. So we've we've gone through obviously the the procurement phase, which you know, being a public body, um, we have sort of quite tight regulations to to adhere to, um, yeah. and, and uh, you know, there is a process that has to be followed. Um, it, it can be quite a, a lengthy process, but it's uh, it, it keeps everyone honest, I suppose. Is the, that's that's what the process is there for, um, and and it, it you know you have to follow that um, and do proper evaluation of of all the you know of, of all the bidders who who put forward um, their their services and their products. Um, so we've we, that that was a fairly lengthy process. We've we've gone through that. Um, we're now working more with you know in, internal services um, to. To really nail down their requirements, um, yeah. doing quite a lot of our. In fact, we're, we've had professional services help from our, our partner, um, but we're now into the phase where we're doing the development ourselves, um, and that was always the plan that uh, yeah. Yeah, we would be self-sufficient as, as much as we could be. Okay, and and how long has that taken? You mentioned, um, you know, that it's quite a lengthy process. So, when did you start this whole project? Um. The procurement started in, I think it was August last year, and concluded in March. So that was quite a. Obviously, you get Christmas in the middle of that, which which mm. tends to slow things down. And we had a, you know, we, 
we had 19 submissions to the to the tender. So, you know, if we did yeah, two or three, to... we'd probably have done it in, in a third yeah. of the time. But lots to go through, yeah. Oh, lots, lots, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. So that just gives people a bit of a background, you know, a bit of an overview of, of what's been going on there. Um, and it, all this is quite fresh for you. I mean, even the procurement stage, you know, it wasn't that long ago. So with the benefit of having experienced that um, firsthand, and how important the preparation was for that. What would be your key tips for people to think about before actually going to tender? Um, I would say test the market as much as you can prior to going to tender. Obviously, once you go into, you know, once you fire the gun on the tender, you're then in a, in a, a different world, um, almost a parallel universe. You you can't speak to uh, to the vendors except through you know the, there are certain circumstances but you know you're, you're speaking yeah. to all the vendors so it really is doing your homework as much as you can beforehand and that that sounds like you know an obvious thing to do but it, you know you, you do need to ask those a lot of questions before you before you go um, before you get into the official process kind of thing yeah yeah, yeah. Um, what are the you know looking at the, the key differentiators between the products? I mean, there's I mean Gartner will tell you there's I think 400 plus different solutions out there. So yeah. you know, fortunately we didn't get all of them uh, bidding for our, our tender, just most of them. Um, but you know, you, you you do need to have a look and see what's 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 different um, um, in terms sure. of you know the the functionality. You know, that's that what's a Andy might not have seen this, but you know, a lot of the tool sets do similar things, but it's what are the killer features for you? Um, yeah, and, what you are know, the, it's almost what are the, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, hopefully not just price as well. I mean, obviously we, we all have our, you know, some some industries or, or sectors will have, um, will have deeper pockets than others. Um, so you, you you need to live within your, within your means. Mm. I would say, I mean, I, I think key for me was going to go to events, you know. Yep. Obviously, SDI run run um, tool workshops, if we can call them that. Um, we do, yeah. We have the we have the software showcase events. Um, there's one actually coming up in October. I can tell people about that afterwards. Um, but yeah, that, so we do exactly uh, run an event for exactly that purpose. Um, and did you? So you you found that kind of thing helpful? Yes, and, and you know, see other flavours of of events uh, yeah. are are available too. Um, but yes, I mean definitely. Go to these, um, and that that you're you're getting a, a put. You know, it's it's a very concentrated view of of a number of products, um, because eventually you the trouble is they, they all start to look the same. I think once you've you've looked at the the nth one in a day, but uh, but you know that that's a, a good way of of testing the market yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um. So then on to the the tender process itself. Like, there's a lot of advice out there, and you know we we posted things in the past as well and we do sessions on it but what did you discover you know in reality perhaps that no one has warned you of or that you when you actually came to do it you thought ah actually this is a big this is this would be a big thing um about. yeah i mean we we spoke to a lot of a lot of people in advance um being in the higher education side of things and um, we, we have quite a, a good community and quite a, you know, a very open and sharing community um who are you know Learn by other people's mistakes. Um, go and go and speak to them. You know, the, are you likely to get is someone likely to give you a tender document that fits your requirements? No, I don't think they will. Um, so you will end up with a bit of cut and paste from, you know, this bit works for us, that bit works for us. Um, you know, the, the, but it is you. You need to you know, nail down what it is that you want to of it, not someone else's uh, requirements. Yeah, of course. And what, so what after, did you come away thinking, you know, what's the most important thing when you're doing those tender documents? I think, well, and this may sound a bit cheesy, but one of the things is specify word counts in, in tender documents. I, um, and I, I, we probably caused a lot of vendors some pain as well, that if you leave a, a comments box at the end of something that you really just wanted a yes or no answer for, then you will get it filled in. And when you yeah. get 19 of them, um, 19 times 100 questions, uh, it, it makes for a lot of reading. Uh, mm -hmm. And apologies to the vendors who had a lot of writing there as well. Um, also, I mean, we, you know, we, we, in, in one of our questions, we asked, um, can you give a brief description of how your solution would meet a, a particular requirement? Um, mm -hmm. And what? One vendor sent me a 32-page PDF, um, which so, so you know, yes, yeah, uh, so it sort of sets some boundaries, maybe. 
Yes, it's, the things are open to. You know, I, I suppose you have to read them, read things back. You know, if mm. you obviously you, get, you know, can't see the wood for the trees, you're you're very involved in the process. But and you think someone will will answer a question in a particular way, you really need to to test that against a, you know, get a sanity check from someone else that yeah. what you're asking there means to someone else what it is you want to convey. But as I say, put in you know, if you say. You know, limit this to a page or to 200 yeah. words or whatever, um, otherwise you will get uh, word and piece. For sure, yeah, sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> okay, so um, tell us then some of the um, pitfalls, if you will, um, that you've that you've discovered along the way and kind of some of the things that you do differently perhaps next time? Um, help I, out. Yeah, sure. I mean, we were looking across you know, a large number of lines of business, so you know the engagement with with all of those lines of business in in terms of their requirements um, was was quite tricky for us. I, I suppose a way of putting it in that you will you'll end up with twenty people in a room and you'll never agree on anything. So you you know that is a that was something we found quite quite challenging. Um, but at the same time, you have to engage with all of the people who are likely to be using the system. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you get the you know nobody asked me. Um, yeah. What's this thing you bought? Uh, so that that's so not a, underestimating the time that takes. Very much. I, th I think that I would say, you know, for the whole process, um, is is the you know you can say, okay, that we'll we'll set aside two days for that. We'll set aside a week for this. In reality, you know, we were all people who who had a day job to do as well at the same time as you know as this. So you're mm -hmm. it is it is tricky at times getting people together um, to to sit mm -hmm. down. You know, concentrate on it. So yeah, that's a, a definitely another one to you know, make sure you've got protected time to to devote to this. Yeah, and I guess part of that, you know, getting buy-in from the the relevant stakeholders early on, or you know, beforehand in advance. Um, just sort of, I suppose, ensure that you know that they're going to um, attribute the same kind of importance to it and the same, and and actually give it some time before you get to that stage, I guess, and, and having that all, all the expectations set out clearly. Very much so. Mm. OK. Um, and I mean, in terms of um, the order that you did things in and, and the the plan that you had for it, if you like, um, plans, you know, obviously any project plans change as you go along. Um, can you think of any, any of the key things that you sort of you thought, well, actually, that would have been better the other way around or you know, didn't quite happen in, in the way you expected. I would still go back to the engagement piece, um, even though you know I I swore blind I had engaged with with everyone. You know, <laughs> there, there are there are many colleagues who would beg to differ that um, you know, well we didn't really know about that, or you know, what you what we thought you said was this, but what you really meant was was something different. So I, I think that is a you know a, a, again it's a probably a an elementary uh, part of a of this kind of exercise, but mm. you you really need to um, go back to the people, even you know, revisit those who you have, who you think you've communicated with, who you think you've engaged with, mm -hmm. who you think you've consulted with, um, and and get them to to really to verify mm. that that you are you are speaking the same language. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's important. Um, and then thinking about the team who were actually working on this project with you, um, how did you manage that? You know, did you have people in sort of specific roles, or just just sort of yourself, and then pulling resource in from your from your own teams? How did you manage that? Yeah, I mean that that has been a as I say quite a challenge for us in that you know people have their you know we're only now um, really getting some sort of backfill uh, in terms of additional. Uh, resource to to work on the project. Uh, it has been sort of re, well, let's say, changing uh, priorities uh, to focus on this. But we've had, you know, we had good commitment from a, a number of the, the stakeholder groups, um, and and this is ongoing. Obviously, as we start to move into the whole knowledge management side of things, that that the stakeholders themselves will own. Um, I, th I think there was a, a thought at the beginning that we would. Create everyone's knowledge for them, um, but mm. you know we will help. But it's yeah. your knowledge; you own it. Yeah. You're the subject matter matter experts. Um, so yeah, that that kind of thing that we and, and you need the commitment that they will 
you know, the, the knowledge base isn't just for, for, for Christmas, so to speak, you know, that they, they will continue to, to work with that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. So do you want to tell us a little bit more? I have um, I have got here the slide with the um, requirements on it. Um, and do you want to tell us a little bit more about kind of the key things that you needed to be able to do afterwards that you couldn't do before? Yeah, I mean, the, the journey for us, obviously, is, is the student and staff experience. Um, everything we do has to have that, you know, at the, at the fore. Um, and we, we are, a, you know, we're moving into, a, you know, a twenty-four-seven kind of kind of world. There's expectation that, that service will be, people will be able to get answers to questions at, at you know, two o'clock on a Sunday morning. Um, we we obviously we have people all over the world, um, so they're they're not going to be in the same time zone as us. So that, um, you know, how how they engage with with the service providers, and it's, I think traditionally we. We based a lot of our support on the university structure, so you had to know how the university was structured to engage with the services that were available to you. And it's, you know, the the hope here is is that we we can wean ourselves off that that there is no need for for students or staff to know who provides the service. They go to to the self service portal and whatever is. Uh, you know, is appropriate for them is presented to them, um, and it, you know, they don't need to know who it is that's providing that service or who will fulfil it. Um, they, they just know that someone is fulfilling it. Uh, you know, we, we had web forms all over the university website. Again, you had to know who provided the service, where to find them on the website. Go and fill in, right. you know, something that looked completely different for for one service as it did to another. Uh, so yeah, that that was that was a big part of it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. So you know, moving into the say the whole self service, the the knowledge management side of of things that that we can uh, that we spend more time creating knowledge rather than answering. You know, the why should two hundred people have to ask the the same question uh, when you know we know that that's a that's something that they want to know. We either we we improve the service so they don't have to ask the question, or we you know, we get the knowledge to them when they they need it. Um, and that you know that supports our whole shift left approach to this. And that's not just across IT. You know the the idea again is here a, a tool set that you know would originally have been designed for for IT use um, and an ethos that that really was designed for IT use. Why can't that work? Across the enterprise, you know, why, why, you know, in in other areas, people they need to report things, they need to request things, these need to be managed through a life cycle. You know, there, there has to be um, approval, there has to be workflow, etc. So that's no different from from IT to me to to HR to finance to facilities. Yeah, um, you know, it, it can if it works for IT, why can't it work uh, for other lines of business? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, did it did it involve then a bit of a attitude shift or a bit of kind of culture shift, if you like, within the organisation to to view it in a slightly different way and perhaps to view the service desk in a slightly different way? Very much so, and and that is a I mean that that's a job for life, um, really. Mm -hmm. you know, it is the, the the clues in the name. It's continual service improvement. You know, it, it will never be done. Uh, we, we we're just going to have to keep keep working at that. Um, but yes, it is a there are areas, you know, that, that we've we've done things, and, and we know ourselves even in, in the IT side of things, we've we've done some things the same way for a long time, and it's it's a good opportunity to to test that now. You know, why are we doing it that way? Why are we yes. still doing it at all? Uh, so, you know, from a, again from a, a service improvement point of view, it it goes hand in hand. Yeah, absolutely, and I suppose that was a, a piece of work um, that you did before. Any other kind of tender or any other procurement um, things, like you know, what is it that we want to change, and what are the actual business outcomes that we want from it at the end? You know, how do we want it to look for, as you said, for the student and staff experience? What are the what are the big picture changes? I suppose. So, did, is that something you worked on at the very beginning? Yes, I mean, there was a lot of. Again, I would say you know, we did quite a. You know, a bit of a roadshow of of engagement, um, but still probably didn't do enough. 
Um, I think we're, we're probably guilty through the, the sort of build phase of, of the project that, that we've gone a bit quiet on, you know, keeping that engagement going. And that, that would be, a, I think, my uh, one of my my top uh, top tips um, really is that the that is a, a an initiative that has to keep going throughout yeah. the project and and on. You know, when we, even once we you know you, you're out the other side of it, um, you have to keep engaging. Or you know, some of the the work that you've done, the the progress you've made will will try to slip back into its its yeah. old ways. Uh, but, but certainly for us, yeah. I mean, in, in a place that's you know, we, we have nearly 8,000 staff, 28,000 students. You know, there's a lot of people to to please, a lot of people to you know keep on side. So that, that is a is a job in itself. Yeah, exactly, and and not always easy when you're sort of focusing on getting on you know progressing the actual project and the complexities. Um, once you get deeper into that, as you say. Okay, um, so I mean, we talked about some of the pitfalls, some of the things that didn't go as expected, but. Thinking about on the flip side, then what were some of the best things that you did that made it um, to make it work, or some of the best advice you got, maybe? Um, I think that I mean some of the workshops we've done have been very, very positive um, with, with some of the areas where, where you can see that you're you, you see the sort of the glint in someone's eye when they they, they think, hey, wait a minute, this this is going to make quite a difference. You know, this is something yeah. that we, that's very manual at the moment, or that's a tedious process, or or whatever. And and you see that, hey, wait a minute, you know, this this will make a change for us. This will make a real difference. Um, so yeah. that that is always a you know that that fires you up to to do more. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I think that is and, and we're you know again we're possibly areas aren't aware of what what the possibilities are out there um, that, that you yeah. bring something to them that, that you know they've been suffering with something for a, a good number of years but that's just the way it is um, and you know wait a minute we can do that differently um, we can take the some of the pain out of that or we can you know do you need to be doing that at all is that something that we could automate which frees up your time to do to do something else um, you know again the be a knowledge manager not a firefighter uh, type approach so almost i mean so you're you're sort of you're pleased that you took fairly ambitious approach to the whole thing i guess i am am i pleased that it's kept me awake many many nights um if i'm being honest um it, it is a, but that's the the university's approach um at the moment is be ambitious um, be yeah. world changing and that's what we we set out to do uh, so yes, I mean that, that's the, you know, yes we could have bitten this off in much smaller chunks, um, but we could have taken the next ten years doing it. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it has been ambitious. It hasn't, you know, has it been without pain? No, it hasn't. Um, will there be ongoing pain? Yes, I'm sure there will be. But it's a that's that's the reality of a of a big project like this. Um, if, yeah, you know, absolutely. If, if you want to make a difference, you, you really need to get, you know, get in and. and and make a change yeah. to the way that you do things. Yeah, absolutely. And and how did you thinking again about the kind of selecting the partner and, and the partner that was going to work with you on this and to really get what you achieved out of it? How did you feel as though you knew um, that you were on the right lines and that you were making the right decision? Um, well, we spent quite a lot of time, you know, ahead of um, putting the tender live, obviously working through the scenarios in the tender. Um, I mean, I, again, we the process for us is is blind as far as who has who who will bid for it, who has bid for it, what yeah. how good, bad, or ugly their, their bid is, um, because it's it's basically it's a closed box. You know, we we make the tender live, and then we don't know who's in it really until the um, until the, the deadline day when when our procurement people open the box and say okay here are all the here's what you have so you, mm -hmm. you could paint yourself into a corner you know if if you go very heavily on price as being your driver and you you get a system that you can afford but doesn't actually do what it is you want want it to do or you go very heavily on quality um, and you you find a system that that does everything you want it to do but then you find you can't afford it um, mm -hmm. so this. I think there's a bit of there's a balance to be struck there, 
Um, and I think we got that, that balance correct. Um, and were there you things... Go, sorry, you go, sorry. Go. No, I was just going to say, you know, the, the, uh, if I would change something there, though, probably at the in the last stage of, of the, the process, I would have um, possibly have changed, or even if we could have taken financials out of it altogether. You know, you've got mm -hmm. to a point where where you know that you have a system that, um, or you, you have a, a number of systems available to you that, that fall within the, the price range that you think you're, you're going to be able to afford. But, you know, again, the, in the tender process, what you say you're going to do, you have to do. Um, so, so we, you know, we, we had said at the start, this is how we're going to going to work it, and we mm. we have to live by that. So, yeah, it, it, I, I think it's worked very well for us. Okay, yeah, fantastic. So, uh, we have got some listener questions coming in. Um, so, just to make sure we've got sort of time for those, um, let's move on to that if if that's okay. Um, and I can see a few more popping in now, so bear with me, and I will just um, we'll just find find some of those. So, um, somebody's asking what the size of your project team was um, and what roles they had. Um, it started off as one. That was me. No, mm -hmm. um, uh, we had in our going through our tender side of things, there were eight of us, if my memory serves me correct, and again from a number of business areas, a number of, you know, I would say a number of, of positions of seniority within the organisation. Um, as we move forward, you know, we're, we're, we're into the 10s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s of, of people, uh, you know, as we have our, our champions across the, the university. Um, we, we've kept quite a, a, a small core team throughout the um, the build phase of it, which has been, you know, you can count them on one hand. You would think for a pro uh, for a, a project like this, you need, you know, an army of people, but we've, to date, uh, you know, we've, we've done it very well with, I, I think, with, with not a, a huge amount of resource. Okay, yeah, and, and I mean, and as you did mention earlier, you sort of pulled people in from other areas to talk about their own, you know, their own side of things and, and that sort of thing, so. Okay, um, so we've got a question here asking, um, in terms of shift left, where did you start and what was your what was your first deployment um, and roadmap for shift left? Just if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean looking at the, if you go back to your your idle practitioner, is the you know the focus on value and and that's where we've been looking. We've we've asked our our areas, you know, look for your your top five, ten, twenty. Um, you know what are the things people are asking you for. What are the things that you, you know, people are asking you about, asking you for, and reporting to you, and then focus on focus on those. So that's the, we're you know we're still working through with with quite a few of them at the moment. Um, yeah. But that's been the you know it is taking the. You know, we started in IT with the there were a number of things. I mean, part the passport reset obviously was a was one of the first things. Moving into you know the, the sort of profile rebuilds and, and other bits and pieces there that were traditionally things that were um, that were done by our, our level two or level three, um, and we've we've pushed them through into our in fact, even into our student service desk where we've enabled them to. To do some of these things, so that's I mean from a from an IT point of view, there were a few quick wins. Um, there's certainly yeah. quite quite a few others, but to be fair, we're you know we are still working through the the big list of uh, um, of areas that that you know are potentials for for shift left. Yeah, and it, because this is very current, isn't it? I mean, this is a this is a current project for you guys. Yep. Um, so yeah, really appreciate you kind of sharing all of your um you know. Uh, experiences so far and with something that's still ongoing and um, I think it's, uh, it's a really it's really great that you've been so open with us and um, so yeah appreciate that um, we have got another question just popped in asking um, what other areas of the organization has the tool been used for but I guess as you're saying you're sort of still you're still working on it but the plan uh, you said was um you know enterprise service management really so is, is that everything or yes that's the the, the plan is everything um... Yeah, you know, I mean, again, you you need to uh, reach reach high. Uh, so, I mean, our, our current where where we're or where we're at at present is um, is IT. 
is is bits of HR, bits of finance. Um, but where we're we're going with this will be all of HR, all of finance, our campus security, yeah. um, our data protection office, freedom of information, all you know, and, and into our student services um, yeah. and you know the college support. So yes, um, and then that's headed. That's where it's headed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the that's the plan. Okay, great. Um, and how long was delivery from? Sorry, how long was the delivery to go live from vendor selection? Um, is a question that's come in from Steve. Vendor selection. So we finished. Um, well, I think we the, the ink was was drying on the contract probably at the end of March and beginning of April. Um, we finished our first build that was in August um, so we are we're, we're working through at present on we, we haven't actually pushed it out the door um, to our to the masses um, that's that's still you know I say we're taking a, a slightly longer view on that and doing some more engagement with with areas making sure that they're you know they are business ready for it um, so that we're not not going off just you know that there's no no great driver to to do that you know, to have everyone alive right this minute and it's you know we don't see any point in rushing uh, that part we'll, we'll, we'll bring people on as they are ready um, and, and as it makes sense yeah okay um so the new question just popped in from neil um how have you separated um data stores or databases for it and hr what we've done, I mean, and again, one of the reasons for, for choosing the product we did was on the um, the data security side of things. They've been able to to ring fence certain areas, um, and and even ring fencing within areas. So we've you know we've got it down to even you know using HR as an example, an HR analyst can press a button on a on a uh, an inquiry or a case, um, and they are the only person in the in the whole system who, who can see it. Um, so that that's very important for us, obviously. And you know, as we are using it across multiple disciplines, the, there has to be the need, or there has to be the um, the way of of partitioning the system. Uh, in, in that. Yeah. Keep all records secure for the the particular areas. Yeah, and data privacy. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. What uh, so let's have a look. This is a, a couple of earlier questions that came in. I think that we didn't get to. Um, Connor's asked, was it important to you um, that the tool that you went with aligned to um, particular standards, for example, ITIL? Yes and no. I mean, I, I've been through a number of. Uh, I've had this discussion with a, a number of vendors over the years. Um, it makes your life easier, I would say, in, in terms of the tender. If you, you know, there are a number of, of standards out there that you see. Well, if it if it ticks that box, then why why are we asking? Does it does it generate um, unique reference numbers? Does it do this? But does it do this? But if it's if it's been um, verified that it can do certain ITIL processes, then you know, don't mm -hmm. spend your your life asking lots and lots of questions. From our point of view. Um, from our point of view, we took it that we, we're still on. I mean, admittedly, we're still on a journey with ITIL, um, so we are. We weren't that fussed that it was. Uh, it was totally 100% ITIL compliant, if you if you want to call that. If any system is 100% ITIL compliant, um, if you can be ITIL compliant, even. So yeah, I mean, it, it was an important factor, but well, long story short, it wasn't the wasn't a deal breaker, I think, for us. Yeah, no. So it's kind of keeping sight of what your unique requirements are, isn't it, and priorities. Yep. Okay. Um, well, thanks everyone for posting questions. We've had lots of questions for Mark, um, and that's brilliant. And and actually, the final one that came in um, leads us on uh, to our next section, really. Um, if you haven't guessed by now, uh, Mark, do you want to just let everybody know the um, the vendor that you did select? Yes, we, we, it was Avanti, um, Avanti with their uh, service manager product. Yeah, okay, and, and again, as I say, that leads us quite nicely on to our next little section. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, we do have another uh, guest joining us today. 
and that's uh, Andy Parker from Aventi. Um, I think Andy should be on the line now. Are you there, Andy? I am. Hi. How are you doing? Hello. Hi. Good. Thank you. Thanks for joining in today to give us your. Mm -hmm. your that's great. Um, so yeah. I think you're going to give us your top tips. So um, think, I'm sure everyone will be really interested to know from your side. You know what? What are your five top tips on making this all successful? Yeah. No, I think that's good, and it's really interesting because um, obviously Mark and I have talked a fair bit outside of this particular uh, session and yeah. kind of haven't talked about this session. So when I showed Mark my top five, it was kind of like, oh yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking. So that's that's a good news. So what I wanted to do is I kind of, I'm going to split it into two little bits. The first two or three are going to be about what we as a vendor, well, not we as a vendor, but the vendor community um, would look at. And then I'll talk about a couple of things that I've seen with customers and some of the challenges and some of the questions you need to ask. So that's what we're going to do. Fantastic. All right. I will let you get on with it. Thanks, Andy. Brilliant. Thanks. Then. So, um, yeah, and this the first one is really something that Mark's talked about, and I just wanted to kind of, uh, enforce a couple of messages there. So when you go through that selection process, and it's just the conversation that Mark was having about the ITIL question, you know, we all as vendors have validation on ITIL. Um, and as someone who, who has um, spent quite a few hours of my life filling out tender documents, um, it is a little bit frustrating when the questions are all the same questions in ITIL. So I think there's a real challenge um, because we all kind of do a lot of stuff the same and Mark's absolutely right. You know, in, in, after a while, everything looks the same and you think, well, what am I looking at? Who was I looking at yesterday? Who am I looking at today? So I would strongly recommend that, you know, the core of your document when it comes to going out to tender is about what is it that as a vendor we can do to help you transform your business. Because at the end of the day, why are you making this selection? You're making this selection because you want to improve. So a couple of things in there is, yeah, you know, if it's important to have some degree of vital validation, then that's great. But use cases and, and the things that you're being challenged with are the things that give, give the vendor community an opportunity to say why we might be or anyone else might be the best partner for you to move forward. Um, I would also put in that a realistic piece, and this is kind of um, just a couple of things on, on, on the way in which those, those processes take place. You know, if, if we get sent 650 questions as a vendor community, we're going to answer those 650 questions. Personally, I kind of look at that and go, so you guys have got to read through 10 sets of 650 questions to kind of make some choices. Um, so be aware of kind of the time on both sides to get the best answer. There's an optimum level in there. Um, and the second thing I would say is also be realistic about some of the criteria that you set that might be on the pass fail type thing. Um, you know, we, we, we do see sometimes that, that, that some criteria that are given to us are, are something which I sometimes look and go, well, none of us are going to pass that. So what do we do next? There is that big difference, as Mark mentioned, about the process in the public sector to, to the private sector. But in either process, what I'm really saying is, you know, the, the delivery of this tool is to meet a business need. And it's not just to do ITIL. I think that's really important. The whole point about this is we're not implementing a tool to do ITIL. We're implementing a tool to make your business better and the way you deliver to your business better. So that would be my first point. My second point is, why are you doing this? We are doing this to make your customers' lives better. So involve them in the process. And, and I would say this is in two parts of the process. This is involve them in the initial process of, of, of the selection itself. But I would also really flag up here is involve them in the process of implementation as well. Um, and I'll pick on that point about self-service. Self-service is your shop window. But don't forget that the people who are using self-service are your customers, not your techies. And that's something for me sometimes is a real challenge is that we get self-service and we haven't spoken to our customers. They are very important. They have a significant say in the usability of tools. Um, now, there are areas where they probably don't have a view because if we're talking about our you know, our world of ITIL, that's not really something they're important in. But don't forget about them because at the end of the day, they're the ones who have to have the most effective and efficient use of the tool. So I would say that is another key element in terms of how you um, are going to go about doing a selection and part of the implementation. The third thing I would absolutely say is, guess what? We're doing this all the time. You know, we, we are not the, you're not the first 
uh, customer that a vendor has necessarily gone to in, in the wider space to implement an IPSM solution. So we have got in the wide community a huge amount of knowledge. You know, I know one of the nice things is talking to some of my colleagues in other uh, in the other vendors about some of their views on how we do things. And sometimes we disagree, sometimes we agree, but we all have a similar thing, which is we've got a lot of time and experience with, with previous customers in doing this. So don't you know, this is a partnership. It has to be a partnership and, and use your partner with their knowledge, you know, bring them in maybe into into workshops uh, to, to view on that. There's two reasons for this. One is because they've got the wider knowledge, but also what I have found is that sometimes having someone in a workshop that you're holding internally, and this is post selection, I would, I would um, hasten to add, uh, having someone from the vendor community in that can be very useful to help the way you think about solving things because they can steer you in terms of how the particular solution you've selected might approach doing something. So we're not telling you you can't do something, but it might be think about it this way because this is the way that the tool is best at doing these things. So definitely get them involved, definitely get the use their knowledge. Definitely don't put, if you've got professional services guys coming in from a vendor, don't put them in a corner get them involved, make sure that they're doing knowledge transfer. You know, you've got to come out of the back of this process in a situation where you know as much as anybody else does about how your solution is implemented and how you can move it forward. As Mark said, continual service improvement is the name of the game. So that's kind of things to look at the vendor. And the last two points are things that I see come up on a reasonably regular basis, and they can be a few pitfalls in the way in which you think about um, doing the implementation. The first one is avoid doing it the way the old one did it. It's kind of the way I put this. There are quite a few occasions, too, too many for me to go, oh, it was just a one-off, where what actually happens is customer will select a product, and then what we end up doing is doing it the way that the old one did it, because that's the way the old one did it. Well, if we go back to point one, which is, guess what? we're trying to transform the business, then if the old one was doing it okay, why are we even in the position we're in? So I think it's really important, and that's about communication as much as anything else, it's really important not to get trapped into that, trying to design it to be similar. It, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If there's something that needs to be replicated because it is working, great. But be careful that you don't get caught in that trap and that actually what you're doing is bringing new and better rather than just transferring what doesn't work or what's cumbersome from an old tool to a new tool. That's not going to give you any better benefit. And then finally, on that transfer from old to new, um, the big question that comes up quite a lot, and I would say the question is, do you really, and I'm going to really emphasize that, emphasize that word really, need to migrate data? Um, and I'll give two reasons why I think you have to ask that question um, very carefully. Number one is, yes, moving data from one place to another, we can technically, everybody can do stuff with data. But depending on the systems, at the end of the day, they're going to store their information in different ways. So from a purely technical, back-breaking, you know, hand-cranked approach, someone is going to have to figure out how that data gets transformed from an old system into a new system. So there is, a, there is an element of, of cost, time, and effort involved in that. But the question I would then say, which is the second part of this, is why do you need to migrate data? Because if you're changing the way the system is going to deliver business benefit, the way the business operates, for me, inherently, your old data is not in a structure or a design that is, uh, re reflects your new world. It's important to have that information so you can look back historically at a, at, you know, at a reasonably summarized level. But at the end of the day, if I pick on something like a category process in, in, in whatever part of ITIL you want to mention, you are not going to have the same categories because you're transforming the way the business works. So how can you compare apples with pears? So as I said, that would be my last point just in that, those things is, do you really need to migrate data? If it's an absolute necessity, then fine. But don't forget there's going to be a cost in time and money. Um, and are you actually migrating data in such a way that it makes the new system better, or are you just effectively contaminating that new system with old data that what you'll end up doing for the next few years of using the new system is continually 
having to do stuff to take it out of reports or take it out of query. Um, and that's actually counterproductive. So for me, those kind of are just a few areas from a vendor's perspective and from a customer's perspective, which I say are really useful things just to think about. Um, you know, the keep it simple piece is really important in, a, in all of this, but you're trying to deliver business benefit and remember that over everything else. So there you go. That's my five little uh, points to back up what Mark was very, uh, very co correctly saying with, with his session as well. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, I really like those and I think they're, they're absolutely spot on. And as you say, we can tell that um, it's the kind of thing that Mark was saying as well and, and what's helped him and what's what he, you know, the advice that he'd give to other people. So that's fantastic. Thanks, Andy, for sharing those. No um, problem. If anyone has got a question they want to post for Andy just quickly in the last um, few minutes now whilst before we wrap up, um, please do post that now. Um, we have just had a, a nice comment come in saying thanks very much um, for all the useful tips. So um, I can see that they're already being appreciated. So thanks um, to both Andy and Mark. Um, so just to give Mark the last word um, on uh, you know how this is all um, how this is all panned out for him and what what you know what his experience has told him. Um, Mark, if you're still there, can I just ask you one final question? Fine, away, Zoe. <laughs> um, how was there like a moment or or something in particular where you that made it sort of confirmed in your mind um, that you'd found the right partner to work with, or that um, this was gonna this was gonna be um, where you wanted to go with this project? I would say we were. Uh, if I was a betting man, I wouldn't have bet my bet a week's wages. Never mind my my mortgage on. Um, the vendors who ended up in our in our shortlist, um, I it, so it surprised was, you. It, it was yes, it was quite a surprise, um, and that's obviously from a from a, um, a functionality point of view and a, and a cost point of view. Um, and I'm, I'm delighted where we've ended up. I mean, I, I, you know, and I'm delighted you know, when we when we got even to our shortlist. It was yeah, this is this is really going to make a difference. Um, it's, it's, it's a funny old process, the, the tender world. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's you know certainly when we when we got down into our shortlist, we were saying you know the, as I said earlier, the the worry is that you paint yourself into a corner. You know you've set out a, a list of criteria, you've set yeah. out you know you know you have a a budget, you've set up a certain um, per, percentage weighting against. And the commercial side of things. There's obviously the, there's the legal side of things as well. We had that you know you have to make sure that at the end of the day you're going to be able to contract with the people who you're you know who come up top in the in the list. Uh, so there's a lot of I would say there there were a number of areas where I was worried that we were you know we we could end up in a position where we we weren't going to be able to uh, to seal a deal with with any particular vendor, but uh, where we ended up was, you know, let's say getting into the last session, it was, this is really going to be good. Uh, yeah. We, you know, we, we can't lose, really, was the, the view. <laughs> it. Excellent. So that was your moment of kind of thinking, yeah, we're, we're making the right, we're making the right move here. Very much so, yes. I see. And you're, you're, and you're, you're at the mercy, and in the, the public <clears throat> sector tender process, you're at the mercy of the, of how good the, you you set out your stall as far as your questions, your you know, say your what you're scoring each each feature on, and that is a you know, I think I couldn't stress enough that that is really where you have to do your your homework, or you will, or there's a good chance certainly you'll end up you know you you get a system that you really love but you can't afford, you get a system that doesn't do what you want but you can afford it, that kind of thing. So you, you yeah, do need so to. To make sure you've got that balance correct and, and for us it was very much so okay brilliant so that kind of brings us full circle back to the beginning almost and and the the importance of um all that preparation to end up with the right partner and to get to where you are now so that's fantastic um gosh yeah we are seeing to be coming to the end of um of the hour actually um and I did mention at the beginning, um, anyone who's been listening who's really interested to hear, you know, more about Mark's um, story and the journey that they're going, you know, that they're still going through. Um, Mark is blogging for us, as I mentioned, um, 
and the the next you know installment of that will um carry on the story really and, and tell us a bit more about what happened next um so yeah so do look out for those um we'll we'll include them in our newsletter we'll um they'll be um you know posted on the blog and and on our social media when they come out so um ke yeah keep your eye out on for those and um and have a look back at the ones that were posted before actually because there's some interesting things in there as well so thanks mark for um you know sharing your story both on the blog and in this webinar today it's been really great to talk to you you're very welcome zoe thanks very much for the opportunity yeah, and, and thank you, um, Andy, for joining in as well and giving us your perspective. There's some really useful tips in no there. No problem. No problem uh, at all. Thank you very much. Brilliant. And thank you, everyone, for listening. As I said before, thanks so much for your questions and your input. Um, this session is being recorded, so what we'll do is um, we'll give you the link to view the recording afterwards um, so that you can go back and listen again to anything that you'd, you'd like to uh, revisit. So thanks, everybody, and I um, hope you can join us soon for another webinar. Bye.